a little bit more and then go to higher dimensional systems. Um, I mean, classification by picture is, is pretty much uh, what we do for planar systems. That is, um, you know, we draw the face portrait, right? And we say, you know, when, um, um, depending on how the eigenvalues are for, for a linear system, x prime equals ax, depending how the eigenvalues of the metrics A are, we have, um, you know, one pattern or another, right? So, um, just kind of uh, review them now that we have all of them in, in one place. There are these, and I'm going to plot only the ones corresponding to canonical systems, okay? The canonical forms. So this corresponds to distinct and real eigenvalues, right? Um, let's see, what, what's the other case? If I have distinct but both negative eigenvalues, right? Then I have Then we have this picture, right? These are considered to be distinct um, behaviors, right? Because here, zero, the equilibrium is a sink, right? Whereas here, it's neither a sink nor a source, right? I mean, it's uh, and also. Um, Distinct. So this is the case when I have distinct eigenvalues, all possibilities. The zero eigenvalues being zero is kind of a special or degenerate case. Um, so we are not really um, plotting it here. And actually, I may be I may be drawing this wrong. Uh, let's be a little bit more careful here. So. If lam lambda corresponds, lambda one corresponds to uh, to this x one, right? So we said lambda one is smaller than lambda two, um, and here lambda one was bigger than lambda two in absolute value. So I think the the, the orientation is a little bit different here. It's, okay, probably goes like this. Anyway, this is a source. So zero, zero is a source. In the second case, middle case is a sink, right? And in this case, uh, sometimes we call this a saddle, okay? Because in in one direction, in one angle direction is is a sink, and another angle direction is a is a source. Okay. All right. So this is for distinct eigenvalues. And uh, let's see. For repeated eigenvalues, then we have another situation. And for complex eigenvalues, we have also different situation. Right. So for um, uh, repeated, so lambda one equals lambda two equals lambda. Let's say is negative. Uh, you know, can I draw it right behind, underneath the the this one here? So it's the reason why I'm drawing it behind because I want to look at the behavior of uh, the solutions, and we saw that. If I have lambda one, lambda two, equal lambda two uh, negative, then we have 
a sink. True? But it's a sink, it's a different type of sink than the one before. Okay? But it's still a sink. Okay? So this is corresponding to uh, negative, and of course, repeated but positive. would be a source and uh, it might be the other, the other way around okay so all of this we've talked about and um, I think the one that's missing here is the one where it's repeated but it's not the canonical form is so in this case, the canonical form is lambda, lambda 1, right? Lambda 1, 0, lambda. Of course, this was lambda 1, lambda 2, 0, 0, right? And there's one where it's repeated eigenvalue, but it's diagonal. So it's, it's basically lambda times identity. OK, and what's the picture there? So if lambda, lambda 0, 0, what's the picture here? Let's say lambda is positive or negative, or let's say it's negative. The picture is so maybe maybe I should, maybe I should draw it right right under, underneath here because this is a sink, but again it's a different kind of sink. So okay. So what kind of lines are, are these? Straight lines. Or not? Hmm? Because everything goes to the origin here. Bad picture. Um, are these lines? They're lines, right? Because the, the solution of this would be x prime equals lambda x, y prime equals lambda y, so x of t is x naught e to the lambda t and y of t is y naught e to the lambda t. So you can see the ratio between x and y is constant. It's t independent. So it's x of t over y or y of t over x of t is constant. So it means it's a straight line going to the origin. And of course here it's going out of the origin again in straight lines if lambda is positive. Okay, so pretty much that's what can happen for a linear system, planar system. Okay. Um, on the top two there, uh -huh. they have a this one have a counterclockwise motion. Both. 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 What, what, for example, the leftmost one could be a sink just as easily, but with a clockwise motion. Follow what I'm trying to say. What causes those arrows to? Counterclockwise of clockwise. Um, okay. Well, I may have got, gotten them opposite, but let's let's take a look. So, say lambda is negative. So negative two, negative two, one, zero. Okay. This means the equation looks x prime is minus two x plus y, and y prime is minus two y. Right. So let's uh, think about. If we start somewhere with both x and y positive, right? Um, the direction field for y has to be going down, right? You see the sign of of the derivative of y. So y is decreasing. Okay, that's that kind of we knew. So x and y here. So y is going to decrease. How about x? Well. Uh, Depends on how that, that uh, right hand side is positive. Uh, well, okay, so I think the best way is to ask this question when x is 0, right? Okay, when x is 0 and y is positive, what is the direction field? Where is, go where is the direction field going? x is positive and y is negative, right? 
No, y is positive. So y prime is negative. So y is decreasing and x is increasing, right? So it's probably it means we got it backwards. So it means that when it crosses, it crosses this way, right? And of course the opposite would be true here. Okay? So We had it right? No, we had it backwards. Yeah. We had it backwards. So then here is, you see, when, when y is negative, x is 0, then x prime is negative, so x is decreasing, so it's going this way, right? Okay? So, right, so the... Um, This is clockwise. Okay. All right, and you can do the same thing with the other one, and you'll get it to be um, if lambda is positive, But I'm not sure even this yeah, is right. Yeah, the arrows would be, this would be the, the sink and the other one. Yeah, I just want to keep it where the sinks are and where the uh, sources are. Okay, but this is not, I mean, this is, uh, anyway. The rotation is, is dictated by the actual uh, direction field, okay? But, um... Wouldn't that one be if one was negative one instead of positive one there? Hmm? Would that equal no? The one on the right. This one. That would be correct if one would be negative. Well, it goes be correct if one would be negative. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's let's do it correctly. So we we figure this should be. Um, Going this way, right? Actually, this this kind of thing is 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 is, uh, is important, as we'll see later, where we kind of have to um, ask the question: What happens with the solutions? You know, with the direction field in certain, you know, uh, for instance, when the solutions cross the y-axis in this case. Okay, what happens? Like, what's the is it going up, down, or inward, outward, and so forth? Um, and and if if lambda is positive, then the system would be x prime equals two x plus y. Y prime is two y. So x is zero, y is positive. Both things are positive, right? x is 0 and y is negative, both things are negative, right? So it go, goes... Okay? So it looks like the solution in this case goes... still clockwise, right? So we're going totally opposite. All right. So, well, the whole the, the point here is that I put them on a on a um, kind of on a columns by the way uh, the equilibrium or the properties of the equilibrium are. That is, uh, being a sink or being a source. Okay. So that's kind of the one of the classifications um, that people care about is. What happens with the, um, or what dictates, what is, what information dictates whether you have a sink or a source or, or something like that, okay? And uh, obviously, is the how many, or or if there are negative eigenvalues, and if 
if there are any, neg any positive eigenvalues. So it's the number of positive and negative eigenvalues that dictates that. So here's sort of a formal classification, or it's called dynamical classification. for uh, systems well, let me, let me ask, for hyperbolic systems so by a hyperbolic system we mean a linear system like this with A uh, having um, all eigenvalues with non-zero um, real parts. Okay. So let's let's draw a picture here in the complex plane. And again, this is true. This the word hyperbolic is also true. Uh, stands for. Um, You know, not just two by two systems, but you know, five by five systems, n by n systems. So there's a matrix and it has eigenvalues, right? And some are real and some are complex. Of course, the ones that are complex come in com complex conjugate pairs, right? So we could have um, a scenario where the two eigenvalues have a positive real part, right? So the only thing is that we don't want to have is that we don't want to have sort of anything on the imaginary axis. Right? They could either be positive, real part, right? Or they could be, I'm just using different colors to indicate po different possibilities. They could be, well, you don't see different colors here, do you? They could be real, right? They could be um, all, in, all, all, all with positive real parts, but they could all be with negative real parts. I'm going to use triangles and circles and all that, right? Or they could be one. Well, what's another possibility? Of course, they could be complex conjugate, right? With the negative real parts. And of course, there's also the possibility of having uh, one negative. Um, and one positive. So as long as we don't have eigenvalues on the imaginary part. The imaginary part and did I not I forgot to put the complex eigenvalues in there. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this. Is that okay? Now we've checked that orienta um, counterclockwise orientation. Okay, so staying away from the imaginary axis with the eigenvalues means what? Means we don't have like a situation where we have concentric circles, right? So um, if it's, how can we get a sink with um, imaginary complex? So it's alpha minus beta, beta alpha. And again, now you're gonna dispute counterclockwise or clockwise. Um, Let's see. So this is going to be spiraling in, right? Let's see. If, uh, if beta is positive, I like to... Uh, what do you think? I like to bet... It's going to be... Clockwise, right? Sync again, right? So... Alpha is alpha plus or minus beta with alpha negative, and this is going out in clockwise also. Lambda equals alpha plus or minus i beta alpha positive. Okay? So we don't want, we just, so all of these systems that we drew here are hyperbolic, right? 
There's no um, there's no eigenvalues that are sitting on the imaginary axis. Okay. So what is this classification basically? Well, classification is just, is saying the following thing: is saying that all the systems where the zero is an eigen, is a, is a sink is a is a sink are somewhat equivalent because they have the, they have this common property. Okay, that solutions go to the goes to the origin. All uh, systems that have um, the the uh, the uh, zero zero as a, as a source, they are equivalent, right? In this classification, okay. So here's the the more the more the more the precise um, statement. Well, so let's let, let's first do the definition of what is what does it mean. That a system x prime equals a x is um, equivalent, or in more precise way, it's called conjugate <coughs> to another system. Actually, let's let's use x too. Okay. Well, so here's here's what it what it means. So um, let phi of a Do the following uh, is basically the flow of that first system of the system uh, with the matrix A. So let's see how it's it's basically a map that takes time and some initial point in the plane to. The solution of that system at time t starting at that point. Okay? Okay? So B the flow um, of the dynamical system of the system x prime equals ax. Okay? So again, what does this say? It's it's very similar to the one we talked about Poincaré map. Um, we talked about this this flow. So x naught is here, right? X naught is a point in the plane. That's the initial condition, right? And we let we could well through that point there is a solution to that system, right? And that's going to be after time t. This is going to be x of t, okay? So that defines sort of a map, right, for time and initial position takes you to that. Okay. So for instance, if you fix time, if you say time one t equals one, what's this map doing? It's taking all the points in the plane and shipping them to where the system is after one unit of time, right? So for instance, if it's if we're talking about the spiraling in, then what's the flow? Well, all the points got get closer to the origin and rotated by a little bit, right? Yeah? So that's what it means to um, it's just keeping track of where the solution is after a certain amount of time, t. Okay. Well, there is a similar flow for the other system, right? So there is similar flow for x prime equals bx. Let's call that phi b, right? 
Okay, so the definition is um, so we say these two systems x prime equals ax and x prime equals bx are conjugate if there exists a homeomorphism, I'll talk about this, Home homeomorphism in a second, homeomorphism basically it's called, I mean they denote it by H, doesn't matter what it's called, but it's a map from the plane to the plane itself such that let's say the flow so the solution of the sec of the system B starting at not at the initial point x naught but at the transform point so through this through this map okay h of x naught so if i let the system run the second system b run not from the initial point x naught but from this transformed um, h of x naught then i end up with the same point is the transfer after the transformation of the flow of the first system of system with a matrix starting at x naught okay so what's i mean what does this really say in the picture here let's, let's draw a picture so there's going to be a picture for a and a picture for b And let's let's say this is the point x naught, right? And there's a transformation. Well, the whole point is is to find such this transformation. If there is such a transformation, and if there is, to find it. Um, but the meaning of it is, let's say this is this is the image through H, right? Okay. Then the system. So let's 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 uh, you know crank the time. So we're going to have some uh, dynamics that this. I don't know, maybe it goes this way, right? And this is the point where uh, phi of a of t and x naught ends up, right? Now let's say, so I'm kind of hinting, let's say this is um, um, one of those you know systems with repeated eigenvalues, right? Where it's a sink. Okay? And now here let's say this is um, um, some sort of like a negative eigen, um, hmm? well no let's say this is uh, this is still a sink but it's going straight towards the origin right then this is gonna have I don't know this is gonna go this way right so so what is this conjugacy means it means that if you start with an initial if you start with the image of that initial condition and you let the system B act on, on this. So this is going to be phi of B, of course, of T and H of, H of X, right? Then what's the relationship between these two? H. N points, huh? H. Through H, right? So H takes this point into this point. That's what that says, right? H of this is that. Okay? And this is true for all the planes. So in other words, if you kind of imagine the whole picture, the whole pl face plane here, right? This means that this map 
takes this exact whole picture and maps it into the face portrait for the second system. Okay? That's what it means to be equivalent. Right? If there is a map, you know, in other words, is the, the map H would take the face portrait of the first system into the face portrait of the second system. Okay? Does it make sense? You guys are so quiet. Of course, this is a whole curve here, but... So that's the meaning of this definition. That's, that's what we call two systems to be conjugate. Okay? And the goal is to find this map if it exists. Huh? Does that mean H or H. 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 Phi is phi is the solution of the system. Well, phi is just I mean it's just a way of writing this that solutions of this system are taken into solution of the system through this map H. And H is right? So if such a map exists, then we say these two systems are conjugate or equivalent. If it doesn't exist then they're not conjugate, right? Okay, so so here's the theorem, and uh, let's see how much we can prove. Okay, so it basically says um, if a one and a two. So instead of a and b, um, let's say a one and a two are two hyperbolic um, matrices so again matrices means I mean again means that eigenvalues are don't have a zero uh, real part okay then x prime equals a 1 x and x prime equals a 2 x are conjugate if and only if both matrices have um, the same number of eigenvalues with negative real part. Parts. Okay. And when it's a repeated eigenvalue, we count that as two. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna scroll back here on the the pictures and just. You know, let's say without proving. I mean, before we prove this, what does that? What did, what did we just say? We said that if if there is only one uh, a negative eigenvalue here, then this is not equivalent to this one, right? Huh? Or that one? Or this one, right? This has two negative eigenvalues. This has none. So, so neither of this on this on this row are equivalent to each other, right? There are three separate uh, category, categories, right? Um, when I have a repeated eigenvalue and it's negative, then it's two negative, right? Because then it's equivalent to this, right? So this this uh, face this system is equivalent to that system, right? Question is, what map does the actual? Co so, what map can you build that takes that picture into this picture, okay, or vice versa? All right. Now, the name homeomorphism is actually um, stands for the following thing: is that there is a map of the plane. So it's a it's a it's a map uh, it's a map of x1, x2, and it has two components, right? 
from R2 to R2. There is a map that takes all the points in that plane to the po corresponding points in this plane, right? In a continuous fashion. And uh, that map can be inverted. So there is an inverse, in other words, there is, a, there is an inverse map that takes the points of this plane to the points of that plane in a continuous fashion. Okay, so that's what homeomorphism means. It's a fancy word, algebraists and top topologists were, use it a lot. Okay? So it's basically saying it's a, it's a map that has an inverse and both the map and the inverse are both continuous. Right? So in other words, you don't distort... I mean, a discontinuous map would not really do it because then it would basically mean I can, you know, cut and then patch the plane that's, that's going to be discontinuous, right? Continuous means there's just a deformation of this into that. Same here, right? These two are equivalent according to that, or are conjugate. And so are these, right? This has two, well, one repeated negative eigenvalue, right? So anything on the... So is this. This, according to that theorem, says that it's equivalent or conjugate to, to all of the above it. Okay? So, what map of the plane would take this into that? You know, that's, that's where the proof is, basically, right? But the statement says there is a map that takes that. Um, it's kind of hard to see, though, right? In a way, you would have to unwind this spiral, make it a straight line, right? I mean, all the spirals that you would have to unwind in a continuous fashion, straight, uh, straight them. Okay. Um, okay. So, again, let me uh, say again that um, homeomorphism means H is invertible, H inverse is of course, you know, from again from the plane to the plane, and H and H inverse are continuous. Okay? Now, there is one one instance where it's very easy to see um, the two systems are um, conjugate or equivalent. So there is an instance where you can explicitly write that that map. Okay. So I'll kind of sketch the proof here, um, or at least you know as much as you need to work those problems, but that I assign. So uh, for instance, in one of the problems. It just asks you to verify that a specific map, if you look at number four, uh, it's basically saying that check that that map, or it's given explicitly, that it, it, it uh, makes the conjugacy between the two, the two systems. Okay? But in general, how do you, you know, you have to show that this, this map exists. Um, all right, so the, the, the easy case is um, when the two eigenvalues, so A1 has w exactly one negative and therefore the other is positive eigenvalues, and let's call it lambda and mu, and A2 has Uh, a negative, exactly also one eigenvalue, right? So according to the statement, there should be a map that makes the two pictures, or maps the two, uh, one of the pictures into the other, right? Face portrait. Why is this kind of easy to, to see? Well, for the first one, and for the second one, think about this. So. What, what does it mean, lambda 1 
negative lambda mu one positive. So lambda one it means it goes inwards, right? But so does lambda two, and this is going outside, right? So it means they're pretty much the same. Maybe what changes is is kind of the speed at which this is maybe this is going a lot faster and then right so maybe one it's right it's just the rate at which for instance on the on the on this eigen direction the solution goes to zero maybe slower than the rate at which this is go to zero right so the picture is more squished kind of okay so how do we make the relationship between the two? Well, so let's call this x and y. x and y. So the first system looks x prime equals lambda 1x, right? And y prime equals mu 1y. Right? These are decoupled. So we have we have the solutions. The solution of this is x of t is x zero e to the lambda one t y zero y of t is y zero e to the mu one t right and then the same with the second one. So what's the flow in this one first in the in the first one? Well, give me a t, give me an x naught and a y naught as a vector, and put this together in a vector, that's going to be the flow. Right? So same here, x of t is x naught e to the lambda, uh, lambda 2t, and y of t equals y naught e to the lambda t, mu 2t. Okay? So how can I make a map? How can I write a function that takes this flow into this flow? Actually, I, I don't want it in the same x naught. I want it in some different x naught and different y naught, right? This, the map of that, okay? So here's, here's what, uh, what... what turns out to be, so x, h of x and y, so the h of a point in the plane, x, y, map into x to the lambda 2 over lambda 1 and y mu 2 over mu 1. Okay. And let's see. So if you take um, if you take h of this, what do you have to do basically? So h of this flow has to be the flow there, right? So take h of this of this uh, took of this vector component, right? It's going to be what? So let's let's do it. So let so h of x of t y of t, which is you know h of phi a one t and x not y not. So this is what this is x naught e to the lambda one t to lambda two over lambda one y naught e to the mu one t mu two over mu one. 
So it's x naught lambda 2 over lambda 1 e to the lambda 2t y naught mu 2 over mu 1 e to the mu 2t. Okay? So what is this? Well, take a look. This is exactly the the flow through the second system of at time t and basically at h of x not y not right this this initial condition for the second system is exactly h of x not y not okay so i mean it's just a fancy way of saying that if a, if if a if a system a hyperbolic system uh, differs from another hyperbolic system just by the rate at which, you know, lambda one, you know, lambda one and lambda two, then you can always rescale. Well, rescale in this fashion, take a power of it, of the first component, of the second component, and match the the next, the new picture. Okay. I mean, I wish I had a way. To, actually, there there should be a way of, you know, create a face portrait for one system, make a picture, right? Then implement this as a transformation of the of the picture to another picture, right? So you could do that probably, and then the new picture will be the the face portrait of the second. Okay. Um, of course, there is some there are some issues here. Raising x to some power is not very uh, always possible, right? You have to have some uh, some care, like x has to be positive and y has to be positive, right? So there is this is not really the entire picture, the entire uh, map. So let's say this is for x and y both positive. But what if x is what if you're in the second quadrant, for instance, or third quadrant? You just have to kind of put absolute values where they're, you know, you have to have some absolute values in the right places. And uh, let's see. I think the precise way is is actually uh, written in the book. Which says, if it's so just look at the first component. If it's so for uh, x negative or y negative, just for x negative, this should look like this. Um, well, for x real, okay. So if it's positive, then it's what we said there: lambda two over lambda one. But if it's negative, it has to be. Uh, absolute value of lambda two over, uh, of x to the power of lambda two over lambda one with a minus in front, and of course, the second component should be the same. Mu mu two over mu one, and minus absolute value of mu two over mu one if y is negative. So in each quadrant, there is a little bit of care. You got Each quadrant has to be. Okay. This is actually one of the rare cases where you can explicitly write down the metrics. Uh, excuse me, the, the the map H. So, and why was it possible? Because we, we were able to explicitly write the solutions of, the, of both systems. Okay? So, like, there's a problem, uh, let's say number five that I assigned here, which gives two systems, well, part A and part B. So, let's see if we want to do uh, any of them. Mm hmm? It asks for an explicit, for the explicit map when 
uh, the, the systems look like let's let's do number um, a I mean I'll, I'll get started on number a okay so this is the first system a one one zero two second system is one zero one negative two. Uh, this, according to that statement, which we didn't prove in its entirety, but we act we proved it for this particular example. Are these two systems conjugate, equivalent? What are the eigenvalues for the first metrics? Come on, guys. Hmm? Negative one and two, because it's tridiagonal, uh, upper upper triangular, right? For the second one, is one and negative two. How many negative eigenvalues do we have for each? One. So it means that they're both, th they are conjugate, right? The question is how do we find, how do we write that? Okay. Now, if you, let me ask you this. So what's the face portrait for, for, for any of them, for the first one, for instance? Is it going to be straight? Horizontal and vertical, the eigen directions. No, we have to find the eigen vectors for the, for each system, right? So what? A, so let's take a one to be negative one. I'm gonna, just going to sketch this. So uh, lambda one is negative one, and mu one is two, right? Of course, we we use lambda, but that's okay. Lambda and mu two. Um, Okay, the, what's the first eigen, eigenvalue corresponding to the first eigenvector? Ah, first eigenvector corresponding to the first eigenvalue. X1. <coughs> Being upper triangular like this. It ends up being just horizontal, right? Why? Let's see. So A1 minus negative 1 identity x equals 0 implies what? 0, 0, 3, x, y. So it means that what? y has to be 0, right? So x, you know, x1 is 1 and 0. Okay? And for the other one, a1 minus 2 identity, x equals 0. By the way, we know there are two distincts, so we know that for each there is an eigenvector, right? Eigenvectors will correspond to this thing. The eigenvalues are independent; they're not multiple of each other. So, um, all right. So this is negative three one zero zero, right? So what do you, what do we get? Negative three x plus y equals zero. So um, this is not going to be vertical, right? It's going to be, I think, x2 is, what, 1 and 3? So the picture for the first one will look uh, horizontal, and so that's negative, so it's going in, right? And at 1 and 3 is going to look somewhere like this, and this is going to be outward, right? So the system is going to, face portrait is going to be this one, for the first one, right? And for the second one, you do the same thing, but now the eigenvalue is going to be negative 2 and 1, and the eigenvectors, again, the second eigenvector is going to be vertical, right? Because it's lower triangular, so, so this is x prime equals a1x, and, you know, I'll let you figure out what, what that is, but the important, it's not so important. Um, let's see. One minus three, so it looks like it's um, three and one. 
3 and 1 so 3 and 1 is like this this way right and this one so this corresponds to uh, going down here and this goes corresponds to going outside right Okay. So anyway, these two pictures are not identical, but the question is how can you but there is a map that takes one into the other. Yeah. Ask me. A comment. I want to comment somebody to say something. Uh, right? from the previous homework? Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Well, they all, yeah, I mean, they all look, are going to be, um, if it was one positive or one negative eigenvalue, then this, you know, you're going to get one of these two. Um, of course, you're going to have some Okay, so how do we build up this map that takes one into the other? You see, basically the map should take the horizontal line to the vertical line, right? So, I mean, of course, we're not going to sit here and guess. But what are we going to do? Well, uh, yeah. Let's not uh, try to focus on this specific so example. You can do the whole thing that way. Yeah, you can do the whole thing. 90 degrees. Uh, so how do we do it in general, you know? What's the strategy? First, we should we should take this into the canonical form, right? So take this into canonical form, take that into canonical form, right? And then just take those powers, move those, um, you know, then use basically this, exp this, this formula, or this formula basically, right? So lambda, lambda 2 was negative 2, and this was negative Well, lambda is for the negative values. So negative 2 and negative 1. Right? So this is, this is x squared. Or negative x squared, depending on if x is positive or negative. Right? And for, for mu, it was 1, mu 2, and 2, mu 1. So this is one half. So this is y to the one half, square root of y, right? Square root of y, or negative square root of y, right? But this is just a map between the canonical forms. So we also need to do the what? We need to transform this. So we need to write t1, which takes a1 into its canonical form. How do we write the a1? What's a1? Uh, excuse me, what's t1? Just put the eigenvectors next to each other. So it's 1, 1, 0, 3, or what's 1, 0, 1, 3, right? t2, whatever it is. Um, okay, then we're going to change this into canonical form. So it's going to be t1 inverse a1, t1, right? And y prime equals t2 inverse a2 t2 y. Okay. Now these systems have been straightened out so that now they look, uh, you know, with horizontal, vertical and horizontal uh, eigen directions. And now we can take this map, we can construct this map H. So 
So let's see, we're going to construct this map H which, which takes H takes Y1, let's say, a solution, right, of the first system to Y2, solution of the second system. By, we, we, we said what it should be, right? It should be Y1, Y2. Let's just think about first, first octant. Uh, it's Y1 square and Y2 to the 1 half. Okay? So now how do we go back to the X variables? Well, we just have to see what, what was the X through this transformation, what is the relation between X and Y? X was T of Y, right? So X, T1 of Y, and here X is T2 of Y. So now how do we get the map between the, the you know the two systems in the X variable? Can somebody tell me? This is the holy grail, right? We want the map H that takes solutions of the first system into solution of the second system. Well, we know that this transformation consists of three parts. One is take the solutions of the first system multiply by T1 inverse to get Y, the solution of this system, right? Then apply H, this H, right? And then apply T2 to this Y to get back to X. Okay. So if I could kind of use this as a different H tilde. Tilde it just stands for the between canonical systems, right? So then H of X1, solutions of the first system, right? Will equal T Let's see, we equal T2 H tilde T1 inverse of X1. Okay? So, this looks like a mess, but think about it this way. Now I can um, I can compute the components of this. So there's going to be, well, whatever T1 inverse is, right? Um, apply to let's say x and y. So now the the bottom line would be the following: would be to say h of x y is T2 h tilde T inverse x y. You compute T T1 inverse. You multiply by x y. Then you apply h. So H tilde up takes the square of the first component and the square root of the second component. And then again apply T2. Right? What comes out is going to be the map that takes the first picture into the second picture. Okay? Yeah? Only when there is one negative eigenvalue and one positive eigenvalue. <coughs> you see, in the other situations, it cannot be explicit. It cannot necessarily be explicitly written. Uh, for instance, as I said, if you want to, if you want to show that the spiraling in can be mapped to that uh, ray going in, that doesn't have an explicit formula. Okay. Or, or it doesn't have a, a explicit 
it doesn't have a nice way of writing. Whereas here, it's just the, taking the square root of the first one and the square root of the second one. Of course, there's a plus and minus, so maybe I should write plus, minus, plus, minus, depending on how uh, y1 is positive or y1 is, y1 is negative. Okay. Um, again, I'm trying to figure out. I think in MATLAB you could potentially sh uh, picture this. Maybe I'll show you next time. You can actually picture this map of a plane to to, to another plane, where um, you see the components will not be linear. There's going to be squares and square roots. Okay, so that's possible to do, but. Um, and it should match, you know, it should match those two, um, okay? So if the, if the number of negative eigenvalues, let's say, above zero, you have a different... If there are no negative eigenvalues. Right, but they're the same. Same yeah. number of negative eigenvalues, but it's zero. What is zero? The number of negative eigenvalues, so there is no negative eigenvalues, right? Right. For both, so the right? The theorem still applies. Okay. Still applies, so it means, yep. So, Everything's the same except the powers that you use back on lambda one over lambda two. Uh, correct. Is that true? Well, let's 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 talk about when they're both negative. When they're both negative. So there there are two negative eigenvalues, real uh, eigenvalues. Then it should be the same age. Should be the same age. But again, that's one of the simple cases because what's what's the situation when when they're negative? When they're both negative, they all look like this, right? Or possibly they could look well yeah, they could look the other way around, right? But basically uh, changing the x1 and x2 through those powers will give it as always the same um, so it's going to give you the same age yep the, you see so what we what we've done it just says two systems that look like this are are similar are equivalent are conjugate right what you said which is also true two systems that look like this are similar, right? I mean, they could have uh, the eigen directions be, you know, skewed, but two systems that look like this are similar, right? The, the real question is, why are, why are systems that, you know, where you have this, uh, two distinct negative eigenvalues, why is it similar to a system that has one repeated negative eigenvalue? Okay? And, of and also, why is that equivalent to this, what's the map? And also, what's the map that takes, you know, the spiral, spiraling into that, okay? So let me just, because I don't want to, um, I just want to kind of tell you what the idea is, but not going through all the details. So we're trying to show that there is a map that takes, let's say, this situation into that situation, okay? So the idea is the following. So the difficult case, more difficult um, case is when, let's say, uh, lambda 1, lambda 2 are both, well, which one did I say? Um, Let's say lambda 1, 2 is alpha plus. I mean, there are several cases, right? But let's just focus on this one. Um, alpha negative. So this I have two uh, eigenvalues with negative real parts. And this is A1, this is an A2. I claim uh, that just have negative, so lambda, lambda, 0, 0, with lambda negative. 
how do we make this to look to be equivalent? Okay, and here's here's the idea. So let me draw the picture again. So this is this is A one and A two. A two is straight lines, right? Straight straight lines towards the origin. How can you make that equivalency? Okay, and this is a case when um, I mean you cannot really do it explicitly, but you can show that there is a solution. So here's in a few minutes the idea is take a circle around the uh, center of the origin. It could be the unit length, but just take a circle around the origin. Okay, what you want is you want to trace, you want to take an initial point here and you want to show, you want to say what the transformation of that point is. Okay? So I want to point in that plane and I want to map it to a point in that plane, right? So the idea is the following, is you, you're you going to follow the solution of the first system until it reaches this uh, predetermined kind of target, okay? So this is going to be x naught, okay? And this is going to be what is this going to be? No, this is going to be the f the flow through the first one, right? of t and x naught. Okay? Okay? Now, this is this is not just any t, it's going to be a certain t that it time it takes for this curve to reach this target, okay? So this sometimes is called, I don't know, it has Let's say this is tau, so we don't we change the name to tau to say that it's the time it takes, you know, to, from that initial condition to this, right? So tau is um, a function of x naught, because other other initial conditions may may reach this sooner or you know other other later. Okay, then we're gonna follow the other solution. Or the other flow, but in the opposite direction. Okay? Okay? So this is going to be. So, and this, the claim is that this is h of x naught. h of x naught is going to be. Let's see, it's going to be h, uh, uh, excuse me, phi of a2. Of course, it's going to be in some uh, opposite direction, so it's going to be some um, <coughs> minus tau of phi of a1 tau and x naught. Okay, so we go this way, and then we go sort of, I mean, the, the flow of the second one goes also towards the origin, but we're going to go opposite to that, right? So the claim is that is the map. Now, um, we don't have time to prove, but we would have to prove what? First of all, we'd have to prove that it, it takes the picture of the, sp of the face portrait of the first system, into the second system. Can we can we agree to with that? For instance, if just just imagine of one spiraling one one spiral, right? Because there are lots of them. But l let's imagine one spiral. Do we agree that that's one spiral is actually going to be mapped into a one line? Yeah, because if now I'm not taking this point, but I'm taking this point, then it's going to hit in a shorter time. So I'm going to go back a shorter time, right? Agree? 
Also, what we didn't say what happens if we start inside, but it, it's the same idea. It's like you start, you go back on the first until you reach uh, under the spiral until you reach the target, and then you go forward in time along the second flow. Okay. Basically, that's so. so in other words, that map which which looks ugly and we we could try to write it explicitly, but I don't think it's possible because the spiral, remember the spiral is actually a curve given parametrically rather than explicitly. So it's already parametric, so we, we're going to be stuck with a implicit formula or parametric formula. Okay? But this map is, is taking the whole spiral into a line. It straightens that line. Okay? But one needs to prove several things. One, that it's a continuous map, and that's easy to prove if you are away from the origin. What does it mean continuous? I don't know. You've had some sort of analysis courses or no? What does it mean continuous? It means if I take a very close by uh, initial point, do I stay, do I get h to be close by to the uh, h of x naught? Okay, well, because we work with this simple it could be even uh, argued by the picture, but the, I think the book has a nice uh, has a nice proof of that. So it's a continuous. Also, you have to f say that the, it's invertible and the inverse is also, also continuous. And the inver what will be the inverse? Well, the inverse map would say take start with any point here, right? Follow it using the second system, second uh, dynamics, until it reaches uh, this target. See how time, how much time it took to get there, and then go back along the first dynamics or the first system with that amount of time. Okay. And of course, there's lots of writing, but in the end, one is the inverse of the other, right? And continuity is also need. Uh, okay. Okay. So 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 this really proves, you know, I mean, of course, uh, model of the de details. That, that those two systems are conjugate. Okay, why is it? Why do we make a big fuss of these things? Well, the reason we make well, the reason this classification is important is because we're talking about. Uh, I mean, we I we, we really want to get to multi-dimensional systems. Okay, we don't want to do two by two systems. We want to do four by four systems, seven by seven systems. When we get to that level of complexity, we cannot do any more pictures, right? There's no more face face portraits. And I've, I mentioned this last time, and I'm threatening you with that, but I haven't shown you yet. Uh, <coughs> but we, we're really handling a 4x4 four four system of equations, and we want to understand that the dynamics of those four variables as time evolves, right? And how is it depending on eigenvalues, eigenvectors, all of that, okay? Um, so I promise you Wednesday we're going to start talking about multidimensional systems. Um, and I, I'd like to recommend you to look at this. I mean, not that you have to master those proofs, but this is one kind of more sophisticated type of proof that, um, that, that there is in the book. So if you want to go and you know, read that uh, continuity for those two, H and H inverse. Okay? And also, how many of you have linear algebra like uh, beyond the introduction? Two, three, okay, three and a half, okay. So um, we're going to have to do a little bit of multidimensional linear algebra to uh, put ourselves on the same page. Okay. All right. And I promise on Wednesday I'll talk about the projects for the grad students. So, so at this point, we'll um, I have a little bit, a little bit more to talk about.